Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Nathalie scholars. Um, I'd like to thank Nathalie and my sponsors uh, for having given me the most incredible life-changing experience. I'm actually a 2009 Nathalie scholar, and during my time as a Nathalie, the world has changed. But firstly, a little bit about myself. I have four children, George, Maddie, Josie and Kitty, and a wonderful supportive partner, Adele. I work with my two brothers, Jim and Paul, on our family farm shopping business, Dart Farm. Dart has been built around the necessity for a small to medium sized farm, needing to get maximum margin from its production. I'm very lucky, I love what I do, I feel very passionate about it. What seemed like common sense to sell our own and other people's local produce direct to the consumer has helped us to support our local economy, protect the landscape and the environment that we live in. At the start of my journey, I wondered if Dart's Farm was just a place where rich people go to buy nice local food and feel good about themselves. I wanted to understand where the local food matters. So society today is dominated by consumerism. Food is fast, food is cheap. Supermarkets and fast food outlets dominate, and our communities are in decline. Supermarkets supply 80% or more of all the food in the UK. There are more obese people in the world than in starvation. We've never produced as much food in the world, and yet 30% of the world's food is wasted. The supply chain has responded well to these powerful market forces, which have been driven by economies of scale and the desire for mass production of cheaper food. This has led to an unsustainable, to an industrialized food chain and the global transportation of food in a very unsustainable manner. We're experiencing rural and urban decline in small and medium-sized businesses disappearing, and with it, the heart of our communities. Traditional craft and tradespeople are disappearing with the loss of these small and medium-sized businesses and a focus on industrialized farming. The future supply of people with traditional craft and trade skills is at risk with over 30 agricultural colleges in the UK having disappeared. Our, our ability to manage, manage the challenge of changing global drivers hangs in the balance. As Einstein said, we can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. The 2008 financial crisis has sparked a re-evaluation of consumerism <coughs> and values. Banks, institutions, and governments face collapse. The world has changed. We know it. We can feel it. We are at the end of a spend shift and a return to values. This will require us to consider whether the solutions we've developed to meet our current consumerist demands can respond to a very different set of drivers. Population growth of more than 2 billion by 2050, global economic decline with rising numbers of people in unemployment poverty, fossil fuels that enable the global transportation of our food are a finite resource and getting more and more expensive, and food security posing a major threat for many countries. Global problems, but I would suggest local solutions. So where would I go and who would I meet? The person I went to for help and inspiration is a Nuffield scholar called John Stanley. John is one of the world's leading retail gurus and an inspirational speaker and a good friend of mine. John suggested that I go to the New England Harvest Conference in Boston, Massachusetts. And from that point on, the doors just kept opening. It's thanks to John and Nuffield that I have had the opportunity to meet some inspirational people from around the world who are leading the shift to a return to values. I would like to introduce you to some of these people and their initiatives. <coughs> Michelle Nishikan of Wholesome Wave Foundation has developed farmers markets in poor inner city areas. Michel inspired me with his, with his introduction of the farmers markets that were into areas that were once considered to be food deserts. 
His work began in Los Angeles and has spread throughout America. Michel worked to build communities through farmers markets. He harnessed the opportunity of a government scheme of persuading, by persuading the private sector to double the value of food stamps for people on benefits. Providing they spend the stamps at farmers markets and visit a food doctor to learn about nutrition and diet. This initiative has led to measurable improvements in obesity and diabetes. It has also had significant social benefits from the creation of community hubs and has potential far-reaching benefits for the healthcare budget of America. I witnessed a lot of collaboration and I think collaboration is a very, very important thing that we could do more. Matteo and Andy Kelleher from Hardwick, Vermont, from 40 Ayrshire cows to a multi-million dollar cheese-making and maturing business called The Cellars at Jasper Hill. The boys were funded by a large dairy cooperative to develop a high-quality cloth-bound cheddar, which enabled the brothers to create The Cellars. Cabot's investment in this artisan business has been rewarded having won best, the title of best cloth bound cheddar in the world. And this collaboration has enabled other local cheesemakers in the area to use the facility to mature their cheeses for market, thereby creating an ag cluster. For me, Nuffield is about people, and Matteo and his family were awesome to me. I'm sure that we will remain lifelong friends. I also came across community-supported agriculture and the agri promoters of Hardwick. Um, that, that's a town in Vermont, in North America, that there's a book been written on, the, the, uh, the Town That Food Saved. It's an amazing place. Um, one, another entrepreneur I met, or agripreneur, was, was Pete Green from Hardwick, and he created a vegetable scheme. There were over 400 community members who pay up front investing in the community farm, fresh and local produce. This is a great example of community supported agriculture. Pete's Vegbox scheme is supporting other local producers as well, having extended the range of provisions to meat, bread and dairy produce. And such is the strength of the community membership that when Pete's barn burned down, his members raised 60,000 US dollars to help him rebuild it. Matteo, Pete and others also set up the Centre for Agricultural Economy, which raises money through charitable foundations, and has set up the Food Venture Centre, an incubator for start-up food businesses. Lots of people who haven't got the cash or capital to set up on their own use this facility as a start-up. Hardwick boasts many community initiatives, including Claire's Community Restaurant, which only sells local food and is also funded by its members so it has a guaranteed income. And Hardwick has gone from having the lowest average income in the whole of America to becoming a thriving community where people are moving to for a lifestyle choice. When I started my Nuffield, I was originally going to do it all on slow food. And, and as, as I went on my journey, I realized that slow food <coughs> wasn't at the top of the pyramid. At the top of the pyramid were people all up and down, all over the world, who had values. And Slow Food is a very fantastic organisation. Um, it was um, started by Carlo Petrini in 1986, and uh, it was a reaction to the ever-increasing dominance of fast food. Slow Food puts food at the heart of the family and the community. Knowledge is everything. Through a greater understanding of a product and its production process, the consumer understands the value of food. And slow food has three guiding principles. Food should be good to eat, clean to the environment, and fair, a fair price to the person who's produced it. Slow food refers to consumers as co-producers. In buying the product, they are helping to support producers and Slow Food runs a project all over the world, working with producers to help protect and preserve products they believe are at risk of extinction, and giving these products arc of taste status. The slow Food movement is becoming a global phenomenon. So my conclusions of my travels, what, what were my conclusions? 
An unregulated market and a cheap food policy has created an unsustainable food production system. But I'm not against industrialised farming, fast food or supermarkets, but I do believe the pendulum has swung too far. All around the world there are passionate individuals and organisations responding to these changing economic times and harnessing the power of food, helping to rebuild our communities and a more sustainable future. Edward Alvalos, Under Secretary of State for Agriculture in the US, said to me, so many people in DC don't understand. If we are to win the future in these challenging times, we need to reevaluate food policy and revitalize our communities. I would like to thank Nuffield, and in particular John Stones and my fellow 2009 Nuffield scholars, who have supported me during the last two to three years. During that time, I also had the most incredible opportunity to put my Nuffield into practice. I'm involved in the creation of an urban extension to the city of Exeter. And at the heart of this development, we've designed a community hub with orchards, allotments, and actually an academy school for primary school, which has food and sustainability at the heart of the teaching. So we will hopefully teach the next generation the value of food. Thank you.